Download the app from the App and Play Store. Dan 16 on a Wednesday morning. You're on Sunrise Radio with me, Shabnam Sahi. It gives me great pleasure to say a big, warm Sunrise Radio welcome to Mr. Praveen Patni, who is the director of Minaj Jewelers, and his son, Mr. Jaisal Patni, who is the sales and marketing manager. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Always, always wonderful to have a conversation with you. Thank you, Shabnam. Uh, before we go, get on, I want to really uh, commend you for doing such a fantastic presentation. You're very articulate, very very intellectually presenting your show. And whenever we tune in on to Sunrise, when we're driving from home to the shop, we find that we can't switch off because you're so always so very interesting. Your research is excellent and just well done. Keep it up. We love listening to you. Is that a 24 carat recommendation? It is indeed. It is. A, thank you so much. You know, I'm going to walk out of the studio six inches taller. You know that, right? <laughs> no, now, that's a fact. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, we've got some very interesting things that we're going to be discussing today. But before that, I mean, I know that, you know, you don't need an introduction. People in the business and people who buy jewelry, they know who you are. But, you know, just to kind of set it in context, Mr. Praveen Patni, you're fourth generation uh, jewelers, Mina jewelers, and multiple award winning, if I may say so. You were the First Indian chairman after 125 years of the National Association of Goldsmiths, NAG, between 2012 and 2014. And of course, I mean, your CV is truly star-studded. And Jaisal, I'm looking at yours as well. You know, you're a diamond graduate from GIA, which is the Gemological Institute of America, the world's most renowned laboratory to study in. So absolutely impeccable credentials. Let's start with, you know, we are now aware for all businesses, whether they are small or large, to take steps to have an ethical and sustainable approach to their business. And the environment being what it is, I suppose everybody, all trades have to look after the people. They're part of it because, you know, we all interdependent, right? So tell us a bit about Minaj Jewelers and what you're doing to improve the lives of others within the industry. Uh, Mr. Praveen, if I could start with you, please. Yeah, so we um, have over 4,000 jewelers in, in the UK and out of those under 90 have been uh, independent jewelers have become members of responsible jury council hmm. now the responsible jury council is one which is to do with the ethical supply chain of gold and diamonds and anything uh, gemstones included anything associated with jewelry hmm. so what the um, responsible jewelry council does before certifying you as a member they do a full day audit and check your supply chain hmm. and we have been members since 2016 and what um, we do is we make sure that anybody who is going to sell to us can vouch that they don't use child labor, mm. they don't use poor working conditions for their manpower, mm. and they make sure that, uh, you know, whenever the diamonds are being supplied to us, nobody has been maimed or killed in the process of mining. Mm. Now, that takes a lot. I think if somebody wants to come to an ethical business, mm. then you know where you, you can go to. And out of all the jewelers in the country, we are the only Asian jeweler who is certified as a member of the Responsible Jewelry Council. And I am very privileged to be on the board of directors. So my job is also to educate and also tell all the listeners, as well as the jewelers who are listening, that do join because it is the way forward for the industry to better the lives of people who are not so fortunate to working in the industry. We can vouch for that and you can come to us and you can be sure that you are coming to an ethical supply chain jeweler. That is so commendable, so, so commendable. Because you're actually looking at the back office, as it were. You know, when your customer walks in, we have no idea. So now we are assured that when we are buying from Mina, you have taken the onus is on you to make sure that all these uh, checks have been carried out and that, as you're saying, you know, everything that you sell has been ethically sourced. And this is, as you're saying, there's a bigger picture here, you know, to improve the lives of those who work in the trade further down the chain. Jaisal, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? I think, you know, um, it's so important to think about the future impact mm. that our business can have on other generations. And rather than being always about yourself or focusing on um, the personal uh, ambitions of the business, this is looking at how to further other people's lives. And you should feel confident that when you buy that sparkly diamond ring for your wife or yes. you want to treat yourself, 
that uh, you know you've got a clear conscience. I was just going to say that it's without guilt. That's right, exactly. Fantastic. Now, I'm sure one question that you get asked a lot is, uh, is it a good time to sell your gold? And I remember one particular conversation uh, that I had with Mr. Patni uh, Praveen, sir, when right after the first lockdown, I think, you know, when we were talking about how people are now looking to sell their assets because a lot of people were struggling. They needed ready cash. And I remember having that conversation with you even then. So is it a good time to sell your gold? What would you say to listeners who are possibly hanging on to every word that you're saying? You know, our research, uh, Shabnam, indicates that the majority of children who are born in the UK who are under the age of 30 mm. don't generally like wearing 22 karat gold jewellery. So mm. their preference is looking at more practical items like white gold, platinum. Did you say under the age of 30? Under the age of 30. Make that 50. Make that 50. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so their their preference is going for more of the white metals, hmm. white gold, platinum, or diamond jewelry. And as diamond specialists, so I'm, I'm a GIE graduate. My father, Pravin, is a fellow member of the Gemological Association of Great Britain. Hmm. We make sure that um, we've looked at our internal accreditations. If the jewelry is not being worn, and uh, this is a great time to really sell um, your gold and you know, you can actually use that money for more practical expenses. Hmm. Um, and as like members of professional bodies, we always give a fair price for your jewellery. We have a very transparent system and all of our clients are very happy with the prices we give for their old gold jewellery. You know, that makes perfect sense that if you know it is a set that is not to your liking or you don't have anyone that you're going to pass it down to and you know you're not going to wear it, rather than this piece of jewellery just see the inside of a locker, you may as well sell it and uh, make some practical use of the money that you get from it, whether it is to buy something else, uh, some other piece of jewellery or not. Um, now tell me, especially Asians, you know, those of us who often get given jewellery from India, jewellery that isn't hallmarked or jewellery that, you know, is very hard to kind of assess what carrot it is. How does one actually find out what their jewellery is worth? How can Mina help in that department? Well, it's important to recognise that over the last uh, 20 years, the mm. price of gold has gone up from five pounds and seventy pence a gram to almost fifty-one pounds a gram. Mm. That's a, an increase of almost eight hundred percent. A lot of people who have jewelry, which has been passed on into the family or received gifts or bought it themselves from abroad, what they do is they store it. They sometimes keep it at home without realizing what how much it's worth. Mm. And I'll give you a very simple example. We had a customer who came in to get their jewelry valued, and uh, we said, I. I asked her, um, because you haven't had it valued, what have you insured it for? Hmm. So she said, I don't have a, a real idea. I insured it for £30,000. Hmm. And when we valued the jewellery, it was worth £140,000. Oh, my goodness. Just, well, you're not, I mean, the co consumer is not aware of huh. the price increase. Huh. They know it's increased, but by how much? Yeah. And the other thing you have to realise is that whenever a customer comes into the shop, they worry about the valuation charges. Actually, it's the wrong reason. In that particular scenario which I gave you, hmm. if they had a loss, hmm. they would be out of pocket by £110,000. The insurance company would pay the £30,000. So well worth the fee that you yes. would charge to. And indeed. And you know, the fee is not expensive. What you, what our, We use a registered value from the Institute of Registered Values to do all our valuations. Hmm. The first thing they'll do is they photograph the jewellery, they write down a detailed description of the jewellery and then put the value. So if you haven't got a receipt for an item, if a jewellery has been gifted to you or if, for example, you brought something from abroad, hmm. you're just storing it thinking that, you know, it will never happen to you. Hmm. I strongly recommend that you get the jewellery valued for insurance and keep it only what you need at home. The remainder you keep it in a safe place like a deposit locker or wherever it, uh, it suits uh, you, but definitely not at home because a lot of of um, houses are being burgled and we only find out how much they've lost when they come and ask you to do what is known as a post loss assessment mm. and we are always uh, you know thinking to well the bird has already flown the nest yes and and you know the the, the loss is so much yes. that it is param of paramount importance that the customers do value their jewelry and they should use a professional value for their value 
Well, you heard it from the experts themselves. I'm joined this morning by Mr. Praveen Patni and Mr. Jaisal Patni, father and son, responsible for Minar Jewelers. And of course, it is a business that is held in very high esteem. And each time you have a conversation with these gentlemen, you can tell why. Because they're not just here to sell us beautiful pieces of jewellery, but you're also here to educate us and tell us how the business works, how we could benefit, we as customers, consumers could benefit from uh, from their knowledge. Well, the conversation continues. Um, Mr. Praveen and Mr. JSL are in the studio with me for the entire hour. So whatever you do, keep it locked to Sunrise. Wednesday, the 26th of April, you're on Sunrise Radio with me, Shabnam Sahi. With me in the studio today, Mr. Praveen Patni and Mr. JSL Patni from Minar Jewelers. Now, let's uh, continue our conversation. You know, you know, with the price of gold increasing exponentially now in the last few years, the price of stocks and shares falling and inflation being so high right now, is it worth investing in gold right now? What would you say? You know, Shabnam, I, I think that like all other like investment gold can go up mm. and it can go down mm. um, but our you know current statistics have proved that over the long term gold is always a very sound investment you know if you look at the last 10 years the price of gold has doubled mm. and um you know that's something that's you know amazing if you've put something into gold 10 years ago and you've doubled it yeah that's brilliant um but while we're not financial advisors we've seen over these number of years of experience, you know, it's a fourth generation business with me joining the business, mm. um, that gold has always proved to be a sound investment over a longer period of time. And we sell investment gold coins and bars, mm. which are also exempt from VAT. So if people are minded to actually um, invest and they're looking for something where they don't have to pay the tax, mm. then this is also a very viable o- option for them. It is something worth considering, you say, Definitely. right? Now, you know, let's talk about diamonds now. We've spoken about gold enough. Now, diamonds are the symbol of expressing love for your nearest and dearest. We know that. And lab-grown diamonds are now flooding the market, if I can say so. You know, because like we were having a conversation in the ad break and I said that, you know, the number of ads that I see, you know, that claim that you can now buy a ring which looks exactly like a one carat or a two carat diamond ring for a a tenth uh, of the price, maybe even cheaper. What can you tell our listeners about the difference between the two, lab-grown diamonds and the real stuff? Well, as the expression goes, uh, diamonds are forever. Mm. Um, With so many, as you mentioned, um, lab-grown diamonds being abundantly sold on the market, a lot of consumers or our clients also want to know the difference. Mm. Um, The chemical composition of lab-grown and diamond are exactly the same. Mm. So they're made up of the same composition. Um, And as the name suggests, a lab-grown diamond is one that's manufactured in a laboratory. Hmm. Uh, and therefore, you can buy a larger diamond for a much smaller budget. And uh, what we've seen is through our vast network of diamond suppliers all around the world, now we have access to several million pounds worth of loose diamonds. Um, very interesting, as I was coming in this morning on the train to, to the studio, hmm. I wanted to do a little bit of research and I, I looked into our... Um, prices of diamonds and mm. saw that you know if you were to go for theoretically the best uh, quality diamond so you went for a D color mm. which is the finest white and you went for an internally flawless di- diamond um, if you went for a one carat diamond ring which is a natural diamond mm. you'd be paying approximately 14,000 pounds mm. today mm. and if you went for conversely a lab grown diamond of uh, the same quality, so D color, internally flawless, and mm. uh, you'll be, be looking at one thousand six hundred. So the you know the that price is, the is just huh. you know, astonishing hmm. to think that you know uh, this, it would look exactly the same hmm. chemically. It's exactly the same, but the difference in the price is you know mind blowing. So you're saying the only difference is that the lab grown is lab grown. Exactly. So. Is it visible to the naked eye? Would you, specialists, be able to look at a diamond ring and say that, oh, this is the real thing and this is lab-grown? Would you be able to? Well, I think the thing about natural and lab-grown is because the chemical composition is absolutely identical, Mm. uh, we would actually, both of us are diamond experts, by by, by putting what we call a 10x lens to Mm. a diamond, Mm. we cannot tell the difference between the two, Mm. which means that there are now 
instruments available. Uh, they are a bit expensive at the moment, hmm. which will tell us the difference between the two because the process of growing the diamonds is such that the detectors will say that this is lab grown and this is natural. I was just going to say, surely there must be something Mother Nature does which is completely different from something that you have kind of engineered and brought uh, together, right? There you know, must technology be. Technology has to go <laughs> with the times. Yes. Otherwise, you'll get a lot of people who want to you, uh, take advantage of the fact yes. that this is lab grown, this yeah. is diamond, try to sell yeah. one as the other hmm. but uh, techno you know we would send it to a lab if we're not sure hmm. and get um, uh, 100% satisfaction that this is lab grown or natural whichever is the case hmm. but uh, in in near future we'll be seeing a lot of retailers having affordable machines on the premises to be able to, to tell the tell you then and there too so I think the consumer, uh, as long as they go to somebody who is qualified, mm. they know what they are doing, they'll get the right advice and they don't need to worry about whether or not they're being sold um, uh, natural, but it's lab grown. It will never be the case when you're yeah. a professional. We have our code of conduct to adhere to. Yeah. I was just going to, that you know, brings me beautifully to my last question because that's what I wanted to ask you, that if somebody comes to you, if somebody wishes to buy gold or diamond, what are we looking for? How will we feel assured? assured. Of course, a conversation with you is enough to assure anyone. But um, what are we looking for in a diamond or in gold? Well, whenever um, you, in, in, the, in the UK, mm. the hallmarking law states that anything over one gram of gold mm. must be hallmarked. Uh, it's a legal requirement. Mm. So whenever a consumer goes to buy any gold, they should themselves ask for to be looking at the hallmark and a hallmark consists of four marks. It consists of the sponsor's mark, which is the one who makes it. Yeah. The assay office mark, whether it is London, Birmingham, uh, Sheffield or Edinburgh, there are four in the UK. Hmm. Then there is the purity mark. So for 22 cut it's 916, for platinum it's 950. Hmm. And then the last one, which is not compulsory, is the date mark. So hmm. for 2023, the letter Y indicates that this article was made in 2023. Ah, okay. hmm. Now, uh, the consumer needs to ask the jeweler. So what um, we find that the, uh, the unscrupulous ones will only show 916 which is stamped by the manufacturer. It is mm. not hallmarked. Mm. There's a huge difference between the two. Mm. So if you go to a professional jeweler, they will be members of professional bodies. They will make sure that they show you the full hallmark. Mm. And that's the first thing about uh, gold. Mm. The other thing, uh, when it comes to buying diamonds, it is important that you go to somebody who is professionally accredited mm. because it's very, very difficult for those who are already qualified to tell the difference between the two. Yeah. So if you go to somebody who is not professionally qualified, they they won't know any better. Yeah. So it's better to go to people who have professional qualifications and they will have a code of conduct to go adhere to and they will give you the right advice on which is the best diamond suited to their either to their budgets hmm. or sensibility for long term. Uh, into inverted commas investment. Yes, fantastic. It's been so much fun talking uh, to you gentlemen and you know I love the fact that again I keep coming back to your professionalism, your work ethic and I think that really shines through. But my last question Jaisal to you very quickly and you can be completely honest. How difficult or, or easy is it to work with dad? You know, you're a father and son business, fourth generation, you know, uh, working together. So I know that, you know, experience and expertise and all of that, keeping that to one side. It, have there been occasions when you wish maybe a, a dispute on design, maybe, you know, where you wanted one way and dad has said, you know what, I think you're making a mistake. We are very fortunate that we're like two peas in a pod. Oh, and, fantastic. Uh, we get along so well. So <laughs> it's very easy for us to uh, hmm. manage the business that way and when there's so much synergy between the two of us yes you know we've been able to achieve so many great things over the number of years i've been in the business fantastic thank you so much well, again gentlemen so it's before been... um, we end i just want to say a couple yes. of things you know there are several types of valuations that people can mm. do mm. one is valuation for insurance the other one which we have seen uh, increasing is valuations for divorce matrimonial mm. disputes mm post loss assessment. So for example, if you've lost a piece of jewelry and you haven't got any documents, mm. we do a post loss assessment of jewelry mm. and we do valuation for probate, okay. which is in the event that people want to get jewelry valued when they don't know the true value and somebody has passed away and they inherit a piece of jewelry. Mm. And it is legally necessary to get a probate valuation before you put down the value in the estate. So that's what we do as well. And uh, just, um, We'll continue this in a moment, but I'll just uh, come back to you once you've 
uh, ask you what you, you know what to. I think we are so short of time but if you would like to say something we've only got a few minutes now okay, sadly well, just lastly I, I want to just share one um, uh, like uh, review which uh, uh, our client of ours has posted we've got hmm. over 800 trust pilot reviews yes majority of them are five star and we we get this often but it's good for our um, listeners to know that yeah. um, this is a review from a customer who ordered a ring I had such an excellent experience working with the team at Minar Jewelers while shopping for and designing an engagement ring. They were extremely knowledgeable and explained everything in an easy to understand way. Throughout the whole process, I never once felt pressured into anything. I had a very specific idea of what I wanted the ring to look like and Minar Jewelers made that dream a reality. The ring looks absolutely amazing and my fiance loves it. I would very highly recommend Minaj Jewelers to anyone for any jewelry needs and I plan on choosing them again for any future needs. And that's what Minaj Jewelers is about. You know, you can look at our reviews online. Our online um, is minarjewelers.com and, uh, you know, you can also look at the Hallmark Guide on online if you want to see. Fantastic. You know, I'm guessing these are the things that you really go to work for every single morning to get this kind of a reaction from your clients. Thank you so much, Mr. Praveen, Mr. JSL. It's always a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you you so much. Download the app from the Apple Play Store.